Home advantage, we have the reigning UK champion, Caroline Shenton Taylor. Caroline is an industrial physicist doing government research involving superconducting magnets, powerful X-ray sources, and ultra-low temperatures, which makes her sound like one of those shadowy figures from the X-Files, rather than, as she is, someone who takes part in lots of science outreach, work with children, helping them be, build water rockets to try and break world records, teaching them to recognize tree bark when blindfolded which I suppose could come in handy if you ever need to find a tree and it's a dark night. Uh, now, having introduced her in the UK final and last night's semi-final by saying her name's an anagram of an erotic loony enthralls, I thought I'd better find a new one for the final. So please welcome horny national selector, Caroline Shenton-Taylor. <laughs> This evening, I'd like to share with you how a 1950s cup of tea stirred up science. So it started back in the 1940s, when a pioneering group of scientists wondered if they could use magnetic fields to look inside materials. Because a material is made up of atoms, and inside each atom there's a nucleus. And the nucleus has got a property called spin, which you can imagine is it rotating on an axis. Now, the neat thing is if you put it near a strong magnet, it doesn't only rotate, it also wobbles. Even better, if you hit it with a radio wave, you can make it wobble so much, it flips over. Now, those scientists realized that they could detect the wobbles and flips of the nucleus outside the material, and they could use them to work out what the structure was on the inside. They called the technique nuclear magnetic resonance. But there was a problem. You had to put the sample in a strong magnetic field, but more than that, the magnetic field had to be even. Now, in the 1950s, we could make the magnets pretty strong, but we couldn't make them that even. The story goes, a young scientist called Felix Bloch was pondering the problem whilst having a cup of tea. And as he stood there stirring his tea, he wondered, could he stir the sample? Now, this is like when you put milk into your tea and you mix it in. Only he was talking about mixing up the atoms inside the magnetic field. Well, they tried it, and they suddenly got a better, crisper picture of inside the structure. And that was the point that other scientists started to get interested. If you look at the history of nuclear magnetic resonance, it's linked to six Nobel Prizes. Three were in physics, two were in chemistry, and one was in medicine. It really is a technique that has been embraced by the whole scientific community. Physicists, biologists, chemists, we've all worked together using magnetic fields to look inside materials that interest us. Over the last 50 years, we've used magnetic fields to look inside the human body, to look at the soft tissue. But we've also used them to look inside ceramics, to work out why they're so hard. We've used them to look inside rocks, to see if there might be natural gas nearby. And I think, perhaps most excitingly of all, last year a team of scientists used them to look at the HIV virus, to try to work out how and why it becomes infectious. And so I think when Felix Bloch stirred that cup of tea, he did way more than he realised. Not only did he work out that he could stir his sample, but he helped mix up the way scientists work together in the development of the magnetic technique. And so, by embracing it as a scientific community as a whole, and blending our different sets of expertise, that is when I think we can have truly brilliant magical science. And that is how a 1950s cup of tea helped stir up science. <laughs> Well, Caroline, congratulations on ex explaining NMR in three minutes. That's, that's, uh, that was a challenge. Um, and and I th you, you did as well as you could do in three minutes. But I'd, I'd like to, to probe you a bit more. You, you mentioned about the stirring of the cup of tea. What is it about stirring up different kinds of atoms together that makes an image become clearer? So, so right at the beginning, it was the fact that the magnetic field wasn't even across the sample. And so it was getting kind of like hot spots in different places. And then the magnetic field was interacting with the magnetic moment, which is when I did the wobbles and flips bit. If you dig into that a bit deeper, it's actually the kind of the nuclear structure itself and the protons and the quarks that it was interacting with. And because it wasn't doing it consistently in different places, you were getting kind of a blurred signature, a blurred signal out the other side. 
the mixing of it actually kind of sharpened up the signal bizarrely because it counteracted those interactions. But I don't want to sit, step in MRI scanner and have someone start mixing up my insides. Oh, see, the good thing is we got better. So we can now actually make magnets that are, are even across the sample. So now you don't have to be mixed up. Um, but intriguingly, if you want to look at solids, it's actually still beneficial sometimes to spin them. Because if you spin them, Basically, molecules can be chatty, and they like to talk to each other, and the act of spinning them gets rid of those interactions. If you spin them at 54.7 degrees, that's the magic angle, we call it, that you have to spin at. Thank you. <laughs> I'm a little bit, I want to ask you a question about your research, uh, if it's not secret, I mean. Yeah. Are there any interesting things happening to magnets at low temperatures? Oh, so, What's so going on there? The introduction was lovely from Quentin. My, my current field, the last few years, has actually spent working with radiation and radioactivity, so I don't think I'm quite on the cutting edge of the magnetic stuff right at the moment. I think quantum stuff seems to be what's in the headline news mm -hmm. at the moment. Mm -hmm. But yeah. NMR's yeah. quantum. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you very much. Okay, Thank you. Got that. Thank you. Science Without a Spin from Caroline Shenton-Taylor. <laughs> <laughs>